Okay, welcome everyone. Um, this is the Organization for Tropical Studies pre-departure orientation for the tropical biology in Costa Rica summer course for 2019. My name is Brooks Bonner, the Director of Community Engagement and Enrollment Management. I am based here in our North American office in Durham, North Carolina. Um, today, leading the, the pre-departure orientation uh, from our office in Costa Rica is Adriana Botadano Fuentes, as well as the fa lead faculty member for the course, Fernando Sole. Um, and maybe uh, each of you could quickly um, introduce yourselves and just briefly explain your role uh, with the course before we get started. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Adriana, and I coordinate the programs uh, here in Costa Rica. So I will be assisting you with any logistical needs, with safety issues, um, any communications that you need to have, any issues that um, should arise, all of that. Uh, I'm the one that handles it. And we're very excited to have you coming so soon. Hello, nice to meet you. My name is Fernando. Uh, I'll be coordinating uh, the course in terms of the day-to-day -day basis, um, leading or mediating the scientific experience and also the walks and uh, stuff like this. Um, I, I'll be there every day. We'll get to see each other every day. <laughs> so that's uh, basically my role. Um, uh, we'll go uh, shortly through a presentation, but I think that will come later, right? Yeah, well, basically, we will go right into that, but thank you. Um, but yeah, I, I briefly wanted to explain to all the students how this is going to work. So Fernando is going to go uh, through an itinerary uh, and kind of the schedule and the, the fields of study for the, the four-week course in Costa Rica. Uh, he's got some awesome photos, um, some great maps of uh, you know, where you'll be going, what you'll be studying, what you'll be looking at. Uh, and then at the end of the talk, we want to open it up to you students to ask questions. Um, this is a great opportunity to ask about items to bring, um, what, uh, what type of, of luggage to bring. Um, we can also go over how the airport pickup will, will work out, um, what you should bring with you in terms of um, additional items. And uh, any questions, obviously, uh, that you have um, before you depart in a, in a matter of, uh, I guess it's, what is it, a little over a week from now. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, if there's nothing else that you two want to add, I'll, I'll, I'll hand it off to you, Fernando, to start. And um, please, students, just hold on to your questions till the end. There'll be an opportunity to ask them at that time. Okay. Okay. Um, so welcome, uh, thank you for joining. Uh, I'll, I'll just wanna go briefly through uh, my scientific uh, or professional background. I studied uh, biology at the University of Costa Rica at the School of Biology. Uh, that's the logo with all the little animals there. Then um, I did my PhD in animal behavior which is what I love, uh, especially focused into invertebrates, mainly insects, some spiders. I also did a, a, a postgraduate, uh, a postdoc um, research at Australia. And I've been involved in OTS as a student, as you will be now, and also through the graduate course and by coordinating or co-coordinating other courses. So I put the picture there of the rainforest because it's part of uh, my CV or what I like. Uh, okay. So um, as I said, I've been mainly interested in the animal in animal behavior, mainly of insects. On the left there, you have a spider eating assassin bug. On the right, an assassin bug that puts glue onto itself to become sticky and capture prey. Uh, those are from Australia. The weird looking spiders as well are from uh, Australia, but in here we'll see others that look a bit the same. 
uh, instead of in, in terms of a uh, structure and all. And uh, the cool little mammal on the right is a tyra. Uh, it's a carnivore, but that eats a lot of fruit. And I also did research on them at La Selva, actually. So everything has been uh, about animal behavior, uh, my research, I mean. Uh, I'm also a bit familiar with other types of ecosystems. That's dry shrubland from Australia, where I did my fieldwork, where that, those points are. Um, so my involvement with OTS lately has been as uh, an invited professor for these courses or as a coordinator. That's me over there on the right with students from Latin America in the field, in Palo Verde, also in Las Cruces, those other pictures. And as you can tell from the pictures, uh, we have a good time. Uh, it's important that we all get together because we'll be living for a month together. So uh, I'm sure that will be like a, a very good experience for everyone. Um, so for the course in hand, Bio 2019, uh, let's go briefly through the schedule. Uh, so as the course works, uh, as you know, is uh, that we have invited faculty, so since we cover a lot of topics, uh, we try and get the best to cover each topic so that you guys can receive um, a lot of information, a lot of input from different backgrounds. So both from female and male scientists that have different specialities. Uh, this is not uh, precisely the invited faculty that you will have. Some of them will be there. Uh, it was the picture I had in hand. Um, Kathy will be with us. Uh, she will be the TA. She's a, a TICA as well. Uh, so that means she's from Costa Rica. And um, she's great. You'll get along with her, I bet. Um, so here's a rough picture of Costa Rican ecosystems. Uh, you'll see there's a lot of lowland forests. Uh, and that what I especially wanted to bring up was that we have a mountain range uh, or several mountain ranges that split us in half. Uh, and that creates a lot of, bar uh, of ecosystems and also of uh, weather. Uh, so you'll be, I mean, differences in weather that you'll be experiencing. So we'll talk about that later on about how to, what to bring, etc. So this is a more detailed look of how ecosystems, of how many ecosystems we have in, in Costa Rica. Each color is a different one. And we'll be visiting uh, the four stars that are um, shown in there in white. So we'll start, as you see, they, they are in very different forests. So lowland forests, um, wet lowland forests, highlands and montane forests. Uh, I don't want to start with graphs already, but <laughs> this is just to show you uh, the precipitation in Costa Rica at three of these sites, the, like the three main sites that we'll stay at. So as you see, we are in June, and those graphs show the precipitation in terms of millimeters per month. And you can see basically that we're in the rainy season. Palo Verde on the right is a dry a lowland forest. So as you can see, there's zero precipitation or close to zero in the first part of the year. Now it's raining. La Selva, it rains pretty much year round. That's why it's called wet uh, tropical rainforest. So we'll start at Palo Verde, the seasonal one. So this is how it looks in uh, from December to March. Uh, it will look a bit different, uh, way more uh, green. And we'll be staying uh, in Palo Verde from June the 4th to June the 14th. So that's where we'll start. As you can see, 
we pretty much leave San Jose uh, on the day after you arrive. So we'll head on straight to, to the field and you'll start uh, getting to know the country really early during your trip. Um, so right now there's uh, more rain. It usually rains in the afternoons in general in Costa Rica. Um, and that means for Palo Verde, uh, mosquitoes. So I don't want to scare them. I, I mean, I, want, I don't want to scare them. I don't want to scare you with uh, the mosquitoes, uh, but they can be very annoying at these sites. But if we go prepared, then it should be okay. And we'll, we'll also work around them. So we'll try to go to sites where they're especially not very abundant, or working in places where there's breeze. The breeze uh, makes it harder for them, uh, but we need to take precautions. So important stuff that you should bring, I'll, I'll mention it uh, now, is the head net that I send you an email uh, about. So the head net, uh, mosquito repellent, um, in terms of clothing, that might, might be the, the most important one, actually. So a long sleeve shirt that's a bit thick. So something that looks like this, but maybe, uh, well, this one you can't touch the texture, right? It's too thin. Something that's uh, a bit thicker because uh, they have a long proboscis that they can go through thin clo clothing. So something that's um, light, a bit thick, and that's a bit loose as well. That will make the difference. Um, also something that you can uh, wrap around your neck, like a bandana or something like that. Um, and if you're allergic, uh, of course, bring something to for itchiness. Uh, as I say, if we, co co if we go prepared, it, they shouldn't be a nuisance, but uh, if we don't go prepared, then they're very annoying. Okay, uh, so in Palo Verde, uh, now to the beautiful things, those are not mosquitoes, <laughs> uh, they are birds. Uh, it's renowned uh, uh, in the world as a Ramsar site that protects uh, waterfowl and other uh, birds. So right now, uh, the, the lakes, have a lot of water and we should see many, many aquatic life. It's beautiful for learning about birds, uh, receiving caimans uh, or the occasional croc as well. So a lot of wildlife that we can see and appreciate there. You'll also be working in Palo Verde. Uh, part of the invited faculty uh, works with mammals and uh, is an expert on bats, so we'll place mist nets. Uh, you won't be handling the, the bats uh, unless you have a, a rabies uh, vaccine, but all, we can take pictures of them and help the professor around. Uh, we'll also be working uh, with uh, cool little insects on different projects. Uh, it's also important that you realize the context of conservation within the productive uh, or economic landscape. So Palo Verde, the wetland, is immersed in uh, rice field and sugarcane fields uh, on, that surround the area. So we'll go and, and talk about those fields because as a society, we need to understand how we can achieve uh, food security, economic growth, and conservation at the same time. And that's a real challenge. And we need to think about how to best do those things. OK, after Palo Verde, we move down there to the orange star. So as you see, it's uh, from the top of the country to the bottom. Um, it's a long journey, so what we'll do is that we'll stop at uh, Los Quetzales, which is 
uh, high altitude, uh, around 2,200 meters, something like that. And it's uh, close to what we call Paramo, which is the high altitude uh, ecosystem. So we will get an, an opportunity to explore that just a little bit and then head down south to Las Cruces. Um, there's two stars down there because there's two sites we'll see there. I'll go into that briefly, but uh, I'll just show you the stuff, the stop briefly. Uh, this is where we'll stop at Paraíso Quetzal Lodge. It's just um, an overnight stay. Uh, it's a beautiful place where we'll try and see uh, that amazing little bird on your left, the resplendent Quetzal. And um, we will have some time there to chill a bit and then we'll keep on uh, driving south until we reach Las Alturas, which is a very rural station. So you'll experience a bit of uh, remote living in Costa Rica as it used to be until some one decade or two decades ago. Um, it's very nice, it's very calm. Uh, and we'll just have a, a little bit of time there. We'll stay from June 15 to June 17. Oh yes, important to mention, there's no electricity. So when we mean rural experience, it's rural experience. But of course, we'll have a staff accompanying us and um, uh, they they cook delicious food, so that makes things uh, really good. Uh, that's the same station. People lying there in the in the ground. There's a small fireplace sometimes that we can build if it's not too wet. Um, at Las Alturas, we'll be working with rodents, so we'll place uh, traps to try and capture rodents from this type of ecosystem, which are particular species that only live at this altitude. Uh, it's a beautiful place. So Las Alturas is just around an hour's drive from Las Cruces, um, which is where we'll go on the June the 17th. So at Las Cruces, uh, it's not rural at all. It's not uh, rustic, but it's really nice. Um, it, it's tailored for tourists, so you can imagine it's a bit of a, that's like the, the fancy station of the OTS. Um, we'll be staying there from June the 17th to June the 24th. That's the, the dining room or the where we have uh, where we have the meals. Uh, on the right, you can see the, the kitchen. So it's very nice. Uh, this station is known for its botanical garden, the Wilson Botanical Garden. We'll talk about it uh, when, um, when we're getting there. Uh, but it's one of the biggest collections of ferns, especially, but it has many, many plants. And ferns and palms. Uh, at Las Cruces, we'll be talking, well, we'll do this uh, everywhere, but especially here, it's, uh, uh, it's easier maybe to talk about things like habitat fragmentation, uh, the invited faculty that, it's, uh, that we're going to have here, uh, work on how fragmentation affects things like um, plant-animal interactions, mu mutualisms, how they may affect uh, a particular species like this lizard. So uh, we'll be working um, with two um, scientists that uh, work on this type of questions particularly. So it will be a, a great experience. After uh, Las Cruces shown in white, we'll go to the Caribbean side. So up till now we've been kind of in the ridge or on the Pacific side. 
So until now, we cross to the Atlantic, which is very different, way more humid, uh, more rain. Uh, we'll go through, uh, during the course, we'll go through uh, the explanation of why it's different between the Caribbean and the Pacific. It, it has to do with the mountain range that split us into. La Selva, perhaps the most iconic uh, research station from La Selva, renowned widely, uh, worldwidely, sorry. Um, we'll be staying here from June the 24th to July 1st, so pretty much the rest of the course. Um, this is the, the bridge we crossed to, to, entry, to, to entry the, the forest. Um, at La Selva, um, we'll have uh, the, the main activity at La Selva will be your uh, independent projects. So throughout the other stations, we'll have invited faculty that come over and work through a project with you. And we'll train you on how to think uh, about a question how to frame it, how to polish it, how to um, plan data gathering. So all this training will help you plan your own independent project at La Selva. So in here you'll have around three days to do your very own uh, research project, um, which is very cool. Uh, a La Selva, we'll also have two other activities where we can go searching for herbs at night, so frogs, uh, lizards, or snakes. Um, we also uh, do an ecological uh, monitoring of two creeks there and compare them in terms of the aquatic life that they have, well, uh, invertebrate life to be specific. Um, we are having a, a we are having an invited professor there. So all in all, you'll work with um, different animals or plants, uh, different themes. Um, you learn about these very different ecosystems. You learn how do how are they characterized, uh, which species living there in them and uh, also about some adaptations of those species uh, to live in those types of habitats. Um, up until now, I, I've only talked about the science part of it. Uh, of course, we will have fun as we go along. We'll have, you'll have your own free time. We try to make uh, a good uh, academic schedule in terms of uh, what you get in return out of the course, but we try to do it also in a way that you can nicely balance uh, a bit of your own time and learn and experience the tropics. Um, maybe we can go through questions or uh, and we'll leave the syllabus after the question. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Fernando. Um, okay. Maybe Adriana, if you could talk a little bit about how the airport pickup is going to go. Yeah, sure. Um, so you are going to be um, flying into Costa Rica on June 3rd, most of you. That is the day that we will pick you up from the airport. So if you are coming on June 3rd, we will have a driver um, to pick you up. They will be identified. They will be using um, a sheet of paper that says OTS. As you were instructed, you should be wearing your OTS shirt so that we can easily recognize you. Um, and then they will take you to the hotel. If you are arriving in Costa Rica before that date, then you need to get to the hotel on your own. The hotel's name is Hotel Irasu. And we can send this on an email for you so, so that you have the information. Um, and then at the hotel, you will have uh, an informal night, a pizza night, so that everyone, because everyone is flying in at different times, then 
in the evening you will all join um, for a pizza and and um, yeah for I don't know like a little icebreaker so that everyone gets to know each other and then the next morning you're coming here to the office where we are going to do a couple of hours of orientation so that you um, learn about the safety measures that we need to take. You learn a little bit about how, um, how the systems for um, going in and out of the forest um, and, and little details of the day-to-day day -day life that you're going to be having here. And then you're off to the station. So I think as far as logistics, that's about it. Yeah. No, that's perfect. I think um, you, the students will soon realize once you start, but this is an unbelievable program. You're going to go to some awesome places, yeah. see some amazing things that you've never seen before, and you've got great hosts that know a, a ton about you know where you're going to be going and some of the unique things um, that they can share about their country. And also, I think it's important, too, to remember, and Fernando mentioned this uh, specifically when going to Las Alturas, uh, the lack of electricity and lack of connectivity. I think it's in general, it's a good idea to just expect that, you know, at times you won't have connectivity to the internet. Now, all of our stations, our field stations in terms of Palo Verde, Las Cruces and La Selva have connectivity to the internet and access to phones and things of that nature. However, um, I think part of the, the reason that I believe it's many students like yourselves do a program like this is, um, to get out in the field, you know, get that experience. And so I think that um, having some, you know, some times where maybe you're not connecting to the outside world at all times, I think is a positive thing. But I think that that's important to share with friends and family mm -hmm. that uh, there may be times where you uh, are not able to answer emails or uh, make phone calls or things of that nature. So I think it's helpful to just let your friends and family know that uh, for this month's timeline, there will be periods where uh, you won't be able to respond right away. However, if there is an emergency, either on site uh, with the course or at home, we do have ways, still have ways of, of getting in touch with the appropriate people. So That is right. So yeah, there are uh, some connectivity issues in some points. And um, just for everyone's safety, we carry radios with us where there is no cell phone um, reception so that we can always be in touch uh, in case of an emergency and also uh, we have clinics or hospitals close to all of the stations in case anyone needs to go for any reason and now that we're here um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about the humidity as Fernando said uh, we are in the rainy season here now. <laughs> so that means it rains almost every day, at least once a day. And that means that there is a high humidity too. So electronics are not the greatest friends with humidity. So we strongly advise and recommend that you buy silica gel. So what you can do is get some silica gel and get a Ziploc bag and then store your computer, your cell phone, all the electronics there so that you can protect them a little bit more from the humidity. Mm -hmm. And also, um, because you're going to be in the forest and for your own safety, you need to wear rubber boots all the time. So if you have rubber boots, that's wonderful. Uh, bring them with you. If you don't, it's not a problem. We are going to have a pit stop before going to the first station where you can buy the boots. So it, it should not be a problem. Also, we provide uh, three meals for you. We provide breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But if you want snacks, then you have to get those on your own. So on the first day, uh, right before getting uh, into the first station, we are going to go to a supermarket where you can also by um, snacks and water and, and everything that you need. Um, most places here take credit cards, so it should be fine. If you want um, cash, then 
what we recommend normally is that you take it directly from the ATM um, because it's the best exchange rate. Or you can go to the bank, but that is a little bit uh, more of a logistic um, hassle. So it's better if you just uh, take money directly out of the ATM. It's also helpful to, um, to make sure, speaking of, of banks and, and money transfers, make sure that you let your banks know that you are traveling. Uh, we've had some students arrive and didn't tell their banks and when they try to get money for snacks or whatever, um, their, their account has been placed on hold uh, mm -hmm. for, because of um, unusual activity. So be sure to let your bank know that you are traveling. Um, I also think it's helpful to, um, this is on rare occasions, but uh, in traveling, uh, it's helpful to, if you ha can print out the orientation packet, um, uh, I think it's helpful to have that with you. It has important numbers, telephone numbers, email addresses um, with you. Um, it will provide a print copy on the first day. Okay, 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 never mind. Then you don't need to bring it with you. <laughs> it, it is always accessible online as well, but um, it's just helpful to know, make sure that you have some of those numbers before you go, maybe jot some of those down um, to make sure that if something happens that you can um, communicate with us. Um, trying to think what else. Um, Does anyone have any sure. questions? Yeah, we can, it open, we can it open up to questions now. Um, and all you really need to do is, I think you should be able to unmute yourself. Um, and uh, you can turn on your, your video if you want, but this is a good opportunity to ask questions in terms of items to bring, maybe some common um, you know, research topics that maybe some students uh, could do, um, but wanna open that up now. So any students that have questions. Um, Joe, Hi. I see you there. <laughs> Hi, how are you guys? Hi. Thank you for this talk. Uh, I guess, one question I have because I'm an invertebrate geek, but I was wondering if you guys had a uh, collection equipment like maybe ethanol and vials or uh, nets, any spare equipment like that at the stations? Yes, uh, oh. sure. We, we carry the equipment with us. So when we travel from station to station, we move along uh, some bags of equipment um, and we carry ethanol, vial, forceps, uh, what else, pins. And at the stations, there's also more support on that, like more precise stuff at each station, yeah. Oh, perfect, okay, cool. Yeah, cool, good to know you're into invertebrates as well. <laughs> yeah, well, you mentioned spiders and uh, I, I'm a big spider geek and uh, I love social spiders, uh, especially oh, wow. the Australian ones, Delena. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> That's great. Well, sounds like you guys will have a, a few things to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Joe, you have any, any other questions? I don't think so. You guys, uh, okay. the orientation packet was really straightforward. So okay. You. Great. Um, all right. Anybody else out there? Um, Eli, I see you there. You got a question? Yeah. Uh, I, I, um, I was wondering uh, maybe how, like, in terms of laundry and like how much, how, many, how many pairs of clothes we should take, just sort of like, what should we expect for that? And maybe like how many long sleeves t-shirts should we bring like the, for the mosquitoes? Mm -hmm. I, I can answer the mosquito one. <laughs> uh, that, that one we just need for the field. So uh, one or two, maybe two in case one gets wet and then it gets Kind of stuck to your skin so i would say two yeah and then you just uh, wash them or if you're gonna be in the field maybe there's no much point in washing them every day but <laughs> yeah yeah and about laundry yes we have uh laundry in all the stations and we are going to be doing laundry probably once a week unless you do something terrible and get super muddy every day and then <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, otherwise it's about once a week. So like pack a week's worth of clothes in that case? Or something like that? Yeah. 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 All right. 
Yeah, a week should be. Yeah, that, that's why what, what I aim for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'll I'll be taking. <laughs> Uh, hi, I do have a question. So I um, haven't got my OTS t-shirt yet. So I'm just wondering what I'm supposed to wear on the day of my arrival. Okay. Um, it's, it's good to know that you don't have it so that we can let the driver uh, know to look for you. So um, you just need to be aware of, of the sign. I can send you like mm -hmm. the sign so that you know how it looks like. And okay. what to look for. I, I have a suggestion as well. You can travel with a light shirt, like a white shirt, mm -hmm. and then with <laughs> some tape <laughs> and put like OTS as you step out of it. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> I think it's a good <laughs> And Ella, we'll have a t shirt waiting for you when you arrive. Uh, it was just a little bit of a, a logistical, uh, I think, issue getting it there on time if it doesn't arrive um, by the time you leave. Thanks. The exit of the airport is pretty narrow and yeah. small. So it's just one. <laughs> yeah, you basically see everybody that's uh, waiting for everybody. So it's it's not kind of like they're far on the back or anything. You'll see them up front. Mm -hmm. And there's, yeah, it's, it's only one door, so you can't get lost. Okay, other questions? Hopefully you guys are excited. Eli, did you have a question? Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> um, you said something about a um, Facebook group for like the, the students before the program. Is, is that still something that might happen? Yeah, we can create that. Um, yeah, I can create, I can try to create that um, today. Cool. Okay, other, other questions out there? Okay, well, if uh, Fernando, Adriana, anything else you want to add before we part ways here? Uh, I was thinking that the course syllabus, uh, we can send it by the end of the day. Maybe it's, it's easier, but it's, it's pretty much uh, what we talked about, what you will learn uh, to do projects on your own, to know the ecosystems, to learn about the natural history of uh, many of the species that live there, that, that means what they eat, uh, well, you know, uh, what they eat, uh, what's their life strategies, um, the, how they cope with the ecosystems or the predators, um, and uh, mainly to be able to, to know the tropics and to uh, come with uh, research projects which you'll see you, you'll perfectly uh, handle well. And I think you'll enjoy that part. Uh, but yeah, that's mainly the objectives uh, of, the, of the course, also to present the data to peers. So, so we'll be writing as well your faculty-led projects and uh, your independent project as well will be uh, writing in, in a scientific format. And uh, you'll also be presenting the results uh, to the rest of the class and if there's invited faculty to the invited faculty. So that's part of like the objectives to practice presentation, practice uh, building up a project and gathering data. Um, enjoy, of course. And um, yeah, I can send you the rest of the details. We can send them. Uh, during the course of the day, yeah, in the, in the syllabus, yeah. Um, sorry, I have one more question. So, um, is it okay to wear skirts and dresses, or do you recommend like wearing long pants at all times? It's okay. It will just depend on your resistance to mosquito bites, but <laughs> otherwise it's perfectly fine. Okay.
right, so, well, it, it's nice to put faces to the names and hopefully you're as excited to come as we are to receive you here. So we'll see you very, very soon. Thank you so much. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Thanks, guys. See everyone soon. Yeah. Nice meeting you. Thank you. See you soon. Nice meeting you. Bye-bye.